Good afternoon and welcome to After School Snack Time. We are so glad you're here. Hello friends and welcome. It is so good to see you today. I am Ms. Parker, the Financial Education and Community Outreach Ambassador for the Credit Union, and this is Ms. Rusalina, the Savings Kangaroo. She plans all these fun things for kids in our community, and I am delighted I get to hang out with her and you today. If this is your first time joining us for after, after school snack time, welcome. We are so glad you're here. If this is your second, third, you don't even know how many times, welcome back. We are delighted you're joining us again. Each week, we have a delicious and nutritious snack, a story, and we talk about the things that we've learned from our story. And I hope you'll enjoy today's snack and story. Did you bring a snack with you today? Is it delicious and nutritious? Perhaps you did not bring a snack with you, and that is totally fine. We'll talk about a snack, and if you have one, you can enjoy it while we have a snack and read our story. If you didn't get one, you can have one in a little bit, but we are grateful that you're with us. So let's head on over to the snack table and talk about what we're having today. Miss Rusalina has picked out grapefruit. Do you like grapefruit? How many of you do not like grapefruit? How many of you have no idea if you like grapefruit or not? Hmm. So it sounds like we have a mixed group and that is totally fine. But before we can dig into the snack, we might want to head into the kitchen where we can make our snack. All right, friends, I'm gonna take us on over to the kitchen where we can have snack or get our snack ready. Who's ready for some grapefruit? Me! Me! Oh, we're excited. I expected a little more hesitation. Well, we have some grapefruit and I have a special grapefruit knife. I'm not always a fan of special tools just for one type of thing, but grapefruit is pretty delicious and I think it is deserving of its own special kind of knife. All right, let's get to getting this cut up. Hi. All right, so first this, we use it to cut it up, cut it in half. This is a juicy one. That means it's gonna be tasty. And then we go around the edges. Mm. I tried one on Thursday and it was good. I mean juice. Oh yeah? Yeah. It was really yummy juice. If you didn't know. Now that our grapefruit is all cut up, it is time to taste it. So first we're going to taste it by itself. Mm. Just a plain piece of grapefruit. Mmm. Sour. Ooh, mm. Sour. It is a little bit tart. Tart. But another thing you can do is put a little bit of sugar on it. I wonder how that's going to be. Come on, big piece. <laughs> you want a big piece? I Hold do on. too. All right. Three. One for you. One for you. Mm. And one for me. That's good. Mm. And sweet. sweet. That's delicious and very nutritious. Now, important question. Would you eat this again? Yes. yes. Would you prefer it without sugar or with sugar? With both. Both. Well, there you have it, friends. With sugar or without, it's totally up to you. Without the sugar would be a little more nutritious 
and still delicious, or you could put it with some sugar, but both options are great. Mm -hmm. All right, it is time for us to head to the story couch because I think Miss Rusalina has picked out another great story for us I today. I do. Miss Rusalina has picked out a great story for us today. I hope everyone has their snack ready and they're ready to listen. Today we're going to read On a Beam of Light. On a Beam of Light, a story of Albert Einstein by Jennifer Byrne, pictures by Vladimir Randusky. Over 100 years ago, as the stars swirled in the sky, as the earth circled the sun, as the March winds blew by, blew through a little town by a river, a baby was born. His parents named him Albert. As Albert turned one years old, he didn't say a word. As Albert turned two, he didn't say a word. Albert turned three and hardly said a word at all. He just looked around with his big curious eyes, looked and wondered, looked and wondered. So different, but so dear. His parents worried. Little Albert was so different. And there was there something wrong? But he was their baby and they loved him no matter what. One day when Albert was sick in bed, his father brought him a compass a small round case with a magnetic needle inside. No matter which way Albert turned the compass, the needle always pointed north. As if by an invisible hand, Albert was so amazed he trembled. Suddenly he knew there were mysteries in the world, hidden and silent unknown and unseen. He wanted more than anything to understand those mysteries. Albert started asking questions. Questions at home, questions at school, so many questions that some of his teachers told him he was a disruption to his class. They said he would never amount to anything unless he learned to behave like the other students. But Albert didn't want to be like the other students. He wanted to discover the hidden mysteries in the world. One day, as Albert was zipping through the countryside on his bicycle, he looked up at the beams of sunlight Speeding from the sun to the earth, he wondered, what would it be like to ride one of those beams? And in his mind, right there and then, Albert was no longer on his bicycle, no longer on the country road. He was racing through space on a beam of light. It was the biggest, most exciting thought Albert had ever had. And it filled his mind with questions. Albert began to read and study. He read about light and sound, almost about heat and magnetism, and about gravity, the invisible force that pulls us toward our planet and keeps the moon from floating off into outer space. Magnetism, gravity, light, sound. And he read about numbers. Albert loved numbers. They were the secret language for figuring things out. But all that reading didn't answer all of Albert's questions. So he kept on reading, 
wondering, and learning. When Albert graduated from college, he wanted to teach the subjects he loved, all the things he'd read about all those years. But Albert couldn't find a job as a teacher. So he got another job, a simple, quiet job in a government office, an office where he worked with other people's ideas and inventions. He did his work very well and very quickly, so quickly that he had lots of extra time to think and wonder. Albert wanted watched a lump of sugar dissolve and disappear into hot tea. How could this happen? He watched the smoke from his pipe swirl and disappear into the air. How could one thing disappear into another? Then he began to figure it out. He thought about the idea that everything is made out of teeny tiny moving bits of stuff, far too tiny to see, little bits called atoms. Some people didn't believe that atoms existed, but Albert's figuring helped prove that everything in the world is made of atoms, even sugar and tea, even smoke and air, even Albert and you. Even this book is made of atoms. Then Albert thought about motion. He realized that everything is always in motion and moving, moving through space, moving through time, even sound asleep, we're moving. As our planet circles the sun and our lives travel into the future, Albert saw time and space as no one ever had before. Albert wrote down his own new ideas, put them into an envelope and sent them to science magazines. The magazines printed everything Albert sent he hoped the scientists and professors would be interested. And they were very interested indeed. They asked Albert to come work with them and teach with them. For the first time in his life, people started to say, Albert is a genius. Now Albert could spend his days doing what he loved, imagining, wondering, figuring and thinking. Albert Einstein is a genius. Albert thought about very big things like the size and the shape of the entire universe. He thought about very, very small things like what goes on inside the atoms that everything is made of. He thought about mysterious forces like magnetism and gravity. He discovered whole new ways to understand how all these things work. Too small to see, much too small, he says. Everywhere Albert went, he would think and think. One of Albert's favorite thinking places was his little sailboat. He loved to let his mind wander as the wind blew him across the water. Sometimes when Albert was having a tough time with a tricky problem, he would put it aside and play his violin. Music made Albert happy. He said it helped him think better. Albert even chose his clothes for thinking. His favorites were his comfy old saggy baggy sweaters and pants and shoes without socks. He said that now he was a grown up, no one could tell him to put on his socks. My feet are happier without socks, he said. 
in the town where he lived, he became known for wandering around deep in thought, sometimes eating an ice cream cone, always recognizable with his long, wild hair, which by then had become quite white. Everywhere Albert went, he tried to figure out the secrets of the universe, and he never forgot about that beam of light that he rode so long ago in his imagination. Albert figured out that no person, no thing, could ever zoom through space as fast as a beam of light. He figured that if he could travel near the speed of light, crazy things would happen. Only minutes would pass for Albert, while years and years went by for the rest of us. This idea was so amazing, people didn't believe it at first. But scientists today have proven that it's true. All the scientists say, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. Albert thought and figured until the very last minute of the very last day of his life. He asked questions never asked before, found answers never found before, and dreamed up ideas never dreamt before. Albert's ideas helped build spaceships and satellites that travel to the moon and beyond. His thinking helped us understand our universe as no one had before. But still, Albert left many big questions. Big questions that scientists are working on today. Questions that someday you may answer by wondering, thinking, and imagining. Friends, what did you think of that story? I think Miss Rusalina may have picked a great book today. I wonder what kinds of things do you have questions about? What kinds of things do you want to read more books and learn about? Each of us has very different questions, sometimes the same. But if we each keep imagining and thinking and wondering and learning, you might do incredible things just like Albert Einstein. He was such a gift to people then and now, and I bet that even you are a gift. I know it's true. So I hope that each of you will keep thinking, questioning, wondering, imagining, and learning. And I hope that you will join us next week right here for another after school snack time. It was so great to see you today, friends. And I hope you'll join us again next Wednesday when Miss Brusalina will bring us another delicious and nutritious snack and another great story to get us thinking and learning all kinds of great things. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye friends.